One Oklahoma school is proud of the academic record it's achieved over the past five years. The school can boast of a 100% graduation rate during that period. It's a statistic that is even more impressive when you consider the challenges students at this unique institution face. Students in this cafeteria are engaged in conversation, but with a difference. They're using American Sign Language. At the Oklahoma School for the Deaf, signing is just one of the things that set this campus in Sulphur apart from other public and private schools in Oklahoma. Three years ago, Can Varner became the first deaf female superintendent in the school's 117-year history. The mission of OSD is to provide the ultimate education and environment barrier-free, provide the same education as students would receive at any other school. The key phrase is barrier-free. The Federal Individuals with Disabilities Education Act Students in this cafeteria are engaged in conversation, but with a difference. They're using American Sign Language. At the Oklahoma School for the Deaf, signing is just one of the things that set this campus in Sulphur apart from other public and private schools in Oklahoma. Three years ago, Can Varner became the first deaf female superintendent in the school's 117-year history. The mission of OSD is to provide the ultimate education and environment barrier-free, provide the same education as students would receive at any other school. The key phrase is barrier-free. The Federal Individuals with Disabilities Education Act requires schools to provide a free, appropriate public education in the least restrictive environment that is appropriate to the students' needs. We believe that this is the least restrictive environment here because there's no restrictions here to communicate. You can communicate with the cooks in the kitchen, you can communicate with the nurses, with the superintendent, you can communicate with the teachers, you can communicate with everybody. Communication is important to students like Drew Sanger and Sean Thomas Sled. Drew attended public school in Tulsa until the ninth grade when she began at OSD. She says the fact that everyone at the school signs makes a huge difference. It's very special to me. I feel like when you talk to someone, you have a strong connection to that person you're talking to. Sean, a member of the academic team and quarterback for the Indians football team, agrees. You know, having the opportunity to play with, with teammates that are deaf and, and everybody signs, it, it really is neat and uh, we've got a great team. Deafness is not an obstacle for these players. In fact, a deaf quarterback at Gallaudet University in Washington, D.C. is credited with inventing the football huddle in 1892 to prevent other deaf players from seeing the signs he made to his teammates. All the coaches at OSD sign, as does the school's librarian, although she chose not to for this interview. Sue Galloway has been librarian at OSD for the past 23 years. That's appropriate since her great-great-great-grandfather is Laurent Clare, who largely invented American Sign Language. He was the first deaf teacher of the deaf in the United States. He was brought over here from France by Thomas Gallaudet in 1817 to help set up the first school for the deaf in Hartford, Connecticut. Galloway is unstinting in her praise of OSD, including those who attend the school. The students are awesome. They come here, they want to learn. The staff is awesome. They want to teach, they work with the kids. They try so hard to make sure that they learn what they need to do. OSD's annual budget is just over $11 million, nearly all of that appropriated by the state legislature. There's no local funding at all. Other school districts pay nothing. There's no tuition charge, there's no cost for other school districts to send their students here. Sometimes people believe that there is a cost involved in for the kids to be uh, taught here, but that's not the case. The school is funded through the Department of Rehabilitation Services instead of the State Department of Education, but OSD still has to meet state-mandated education standards. We pride ourselves 
to make sure that we provide quality education the same as you would get anywhere else, which includes meeting the same standards as any other school. Tell me about the graduation rate here. We have 100%. We have for, had 100% for several years now. And that's something that we're very, very proud of. Varner is grateful the legislature hasn't reduced its appropriation in recent years. She says even a standstill budget creates problems. We're operating on the same budget that we have since I believe 2009, 2010, and the costs are going up, and the food costs are going up, fuel cost is up. And we're operating on the same money, even though things have gone up with inflation, so. To save money, OSD implemented a four-day school week four years ago. Despite the shorter week, Werner says the school's academic standards remain high. Her goal is for every student to reach their full potential. They set the goals, the sky's the limit. They can do whatever they want. And that's what we hope to, uh, to instill in them, that they can do whatever they want. The school also hopes to upgrade its bare bones football stadium by adding lights and bleachers. A campaign called Make It Right was launched in 2011, but OSD is still far short of needed funds.